What's up everyone, it's Scotty with Money Vesting. In this video, we are gonna be talking about semiconductor stocks or chip stocks specifically. And uh, the reason is, well, there is no reason because they have absolutely gone crazy and uh, they're definitely worth talking about. So hope you guys are doing great. If you enjoyed this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're just joining us for the first time, link to our Discord and Patreon is gonna be down below if you're interested in joining. Of course, getting access to all the buy and sell alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, everything's gonna be including. Uh, and of course, that 16% annual discount does expire at the end of this month. So in four days, uh, that discount will go away. So link's gonna be down below if you're interested in joining us. So we are going to more specifically focus on these nine <laughs> companies. And uh, these companies here in the last six months have just crushed it. Crushed it would be an understatement because if you take a look at how much they're up, NVIDIA, up 146% in the last six months. SMCI, right? Another really underrated chip stock, which we talked about a couple months ago, it's up 137%. And most of, the, most of those gains have come from one month only. In the last one month, it's up close to 137%. Advanced Micro Devices, Another one of my favorites of 73% in the last six months. Broadcom, I was surprised to see Broadcom up over 55% here in the last uh, six months. We got Lamb Research, another company we have talked about, spent considerable amount of time doing an analysis on this company, up 41%. We got AMAT, uh, you know, which is also applied materials, up over 31%. TSMC, up over 30%. And another one of my favorites from Netherlands, ASML, up over 26% in the last six months, but I think it's up a lot more than that since October. It's actually up, I think, closer to 60, 70% since October because this list is only going back as far as December. Uh, but if you basically go back as far as October, it's up close to 60%. So those are some crazy moves, right? I mean, if you really think about it since the beginning of this year till now, I mean, these stocks have almost doubled, if not more than doubled. Some have even gone up over one and a half, you know, 140, 150%. And this right here is really where the liquidity has gone to, right? The top left of the screen. Uh, this is, I believe, over the last six months. And you, again, you'll notice, actually not the six months, but I think the last one month. And you'll notice that NVIDIA, uh, AMD pulling in a lot of liquidity. We got Micron. I mean, if, if a company like Micron is doing well, you know that there is a lot of euphoria and greed in this market with respect to semiconductors, right? You got NXPI, we've done a video on this company before, on semiconductor also up, Broadcom doing really well, like I said earlier. Qualcomm, Intel, and analog devices, these are three that are really struggling at the moment. So Qualcomm's not able to find any buyers, Intel also just struggling, and analog devices, which I believe is ADI, uh, is, let me just double check here. Analog devices, I believe it is that one. So yeah, perfect. So it is, it is also not pulling in any liquidity and it is still down. So if we actually move over to my spreadsheet, and before we get there, I just wanna quickly go over the VanEck SMH ETF, the semiconductor ETF, which you know obviously has some of these as the biggest holdings, 25 stocks, NVIDIA, TSMC, AMD, ASML, Broadcom, Lamb Research, Micron Applied Materials, all the ones that we just went over. Uh, right now, what you will notice is that I've got those nine stocks here. I've got the price that they closed out today, the market cap, this is going to be the forward earnings per share multiple or EPS expected. Um, and this right here is going to be that forward revenue expectations, right? So revenue expected for 2023 calendar year. And these are their respective evaluations. Now I was shocked to look at Nvidia's earnings estimates increase. This number has gone up from four bucks, 450 to now over 775, almost $8 per share. Absolutely incredible. So what analysts really did were, and if you watch, go back and watch my video on NVIDIA, I mentioned that I think the next day, this was all on the day of earnings, um, that the next day there's going to be a lot of analysts that are gonna come out and they're gonna start raising the earnings per share estimates to over six bucks. I mentioned six bucks. Now they've raised it to over 775. That's almost $8 per share in actual earnings per share. And that's uh, about a 19 billion dollars of net income. So if you do the math, 19.5 divided by 42.8, they're expecting what? They're expecting a 45% margin, net margin for Nvidia, bottom line net margin. That's what they're expecting. And the reason I'm going over Nvidia first is it's the largest, right? The market cap sitting at almost a trillion dollars. And this is the company that actually basically kickstarted this entire move in semiconductors, right? I mean, these companies were not even moving 
Broadcom, Micron, right? I mean, they weren't even moving at all until Nvidia's earnings came about and they just like sparked this huge rally in the last couple of days. They've added so much market cap, close to over half a trillion dollars. Uh, of course, Nvidia's added over quarter billion do- quarter trillion dollars. So it's just been it's just been an insane move to the upside. But I'm also quite skeptical about this over optimistic estimates from analysts expecting a 42.89 billion dollars. I expected a 40 billion dollar revenue in my previous videos. And then not to mention a 775 EPS, man. That's like 45% net margins for the company, which I don't think Nvidia has ever achieved a 45% net margin. That would be insane if they actually end up doing that. But if you take a look at the valuations, uh, 50 times earnings, 44 for AMD. And a lot of people, you know, do get that misconception, AMD trading at 500, 600 times earnings multiple. I got a few comments over the weekend, but that's not actually true because they had the Xilinx acquisition. They had that amortization expense which is a non-cash expense. And for those reasons, uh, their earnings per share was really, really low on a gap basis. So that's not actually true. So 44 on a non-gap basis is where we are. 36 for ASML, TSMC trading at 20, Broadcom trading at 19. Micron actually has a negative EPS for this year, and yet they are still up a lot. Uh, SMCI 20 times, I did a video on this. Make sure that you do check that out. And Lamb Research at 19 and AMAT at almost 18.4. So I would consider like these four, Broadcom, Supermicro, Lamb Research, and AMAT to be trading somewhat at reasonable to fair valuations. Certainly not NVIDIA. Probably not even AMD at this point, even though I've loved this stock for the longest time and I actually love the management and I think it's a great company. ASML also definitely a little bit on the high end for valuation. And I could even consider TSM, TSMC as kind of fair. The median valuation for these stocks collectively is around 20, which is actually not bad. And average is around 28.5 with the price to sales multiple, of course, Nvidia at the top of the list at 22. ASML is over 10.3. AMD is a little bit under nine. Of course, a lot of, a lot of the other ones are trading at four or five times sales, as much as six to nine times sales. So the median is 6.75. Average is around 8.25. So if you consider the valuations as a whole, they're not that bad for semiconductors, right? Even over here on Vanex, uh, you know, website on, on, on SMH, they're trading at 22 times price earnings multiple at the moment, that ETF is. And I believe the average market cap, so this right here, the weighted average market cap ended up being $231 billion. For me, uh, you know, for these nine companies, it's $285 billion. So that's the average market cap for a semiconductor company from this list, $285 billion. And this right here is the market cap, the total market cap sitting at $2.5 trillion. Just absolutely incredible how insane that is. $2.5 trillion for these nine companies combined. Of course, not to mention most of it is coming from NVIDIA and then of course, advanced micro devices. So, you know, this right here is where SMH is. Um, You know, we're, we're heading up to that resistance at 158. I think that's gonna be that next level. I think the market really wants to see SMH at that level. And You know, part of me also believes that this momentum, this sentiment, this hype is like, is still in the early stages, considering the valuations are not that extreme right now, except for individual stocks like Nvidia, AMD, I could argue that they're a little bit on the higher side. But if you look at it collectively on an aggregate basis, SMH is actually not trading at an extreme overvalued level, right? 22 times earnings is still reasonable. And then not to mention, if you consider these nine stocks, the median price earnings multiple is 20, right? So part of me wants to believe that this is only the beginning, but the other side of me, the more value oriented side, you know, the more conservative side, you know, is, is telling me that this is, you know, definitely getting a little way too out of hand when it comes to these crazy price action and the speculation that we're seeing with AI. Uh, and of course, a lot of these stocks that are moving up just based off other companies' earnings, um, be careful out there. So 158 is gonna be that resistance to watch for SMH. Uh, in my opinion, I think a breakout is something that's on the table and potentially even on the horizon here over the next few weeks. And if you do break out to the upside above 157, 158, of course, that's a new all-time high for SMH. And it's been on a very, very nice, consistent uptrend uh, ever since 2008, 2009, moving up with that higher low and that ascending support. And now we're approaching that resistance again. And in the month of May, SMH is up close to 20%. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think about these valuations and of course, semiconductor stocks in general? Are you buying right now? Are you selling? Are you holding? What are you doing? Let us know down in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're just joining us for the first time, link to our Discord and Patreon is gonna be down below. 
As always, happy investing, and I'll see you all in the next video.